lecturer to six months in jail in connection with controversial remarks he made on the social networking site Facebook. Last year, Rahul Kondakar posted comments implying that he wanted Bangladesh's Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, to die. He's now been convicted of contempt of court after refusing to return to Bangladesh from Australia in response to a court summons. Police in Lebanon say that more than 70 truckloads of sand have been stolen from a beach in the southern city. world. The Phoenicians and Romans have left their mark in temples at Tita on the edge of the sea. Its sands have seen the rise and fall of empires. A chunk of that ancient landscape has now been spirited away, with thieves digging craters in the night and hauling the sand into trucks. One of the holes they left is 100 meters long and 7 meters deep. The sand is an expensive commodity. You're listening to World Briefing live on the BBC World Service with me, Maddie Savage. In just a few moments, we'll be crossing to the court in London where two men have been jailed for one of the most high-profile racist killings in the UK in the past two decades. But we begin this programme in the United States. We're voting to decide who will go up against President of Iowa, where supporters of the Republican Party were the first to go to the polls on Tuesday. Political commentators were biting their nails as the results came in, and the results couldn't have been much closer. It was announced by the chairman of the Republican Party in Iowa, Matt Strong. With 1,770 precincts reporting, Governor Mitt Romney received 30,015 votes. Senator Rick Sam Congratulations to Senator Sam Forum for a very close second place finish and an excellent race here. So after an incredibly tight race with just eight votes between the top two candidates, Republicans in Iowa picked Mitt Romney as the man they want to stand for president against Barack Obama and the Democrat Party. As the counting was still going on, Mitt Romney told his divorces why he was sure he was the best choice. I don't want to do them. I love our Constitution. I love our land. I love our people. I love the fact that this is a land of opportunity. Let us restore the greatness of America and keep this land the hope of the earth. Well, the man who came second was Rick Santorum, who many thought had little chance of winning until the last few weeks when he campaigned very heavily in Iowa. He told his supporters what inspired him to keep going. 381, I survived the challenge so far by the daily grace that comes from God. Well, that unexpected performance in Iowa has made one of the other front runners, front runners question his role in the race. Rick Perry finished a disappointing fifth. But with the voters' decision tonight in, um, in Iowa... Get an idea of where Iowa fits into the broader Republican campaign. I spoke to our correspondent there, Paul Adams. It hasn't always had the best record of predicting the eventual winners and losers, but it's, uh, it does have the effect, as many people around here in this agricultural state will point out, of winnowing the field. And a certain amount of that has certainly taken place with this result. And the other thing that's notable about the results here from Iowa was that essentially the Republican vote is split three ways. Uh, Mitt Romney, the sort of moderate centrist candidate, Rick Santorum, representing the Christian conservative right wing of the party, and then Ron Paul, the libertarian, eccentric libertarian candidate, uh, also took uh, a substantial... Well, I think there is a, a strong likelihood that Rick Perry will, uh, will drop out before the next contest, and that is New Hampshire in a week's time. He has already cancelled campaign appearances there. And then the campaign after New Hampshire swings down south to South Carolina, another state like Iowa, where there are large numbers of Christian conservative evangelical voters. And